Fallout Universe is without a doubt one of the most fascinating universes you can explore, with extremely interesting factions, really well written characters, mysterious and terrifying locations, and a world full of things to explore and immerse yourself in. One of the most significant things about Fallout that gives it its identity is its iconic vaults, which since the beginning have been one of the core foundations that helped it stand out amongst other post-apocalyptic worlds. Starting as early as the 2050s, the American government working with the private company of vault Tech started to set up these underground bunkers which would house the inhabitants of the mainland and protect them from nuclear war if it were to ever come to that. The Euro-Middle Eastern war was in full swing by this point, as well as the collapse of the UN and the spread of the new plague. Project Safe House, which was the codename for the vault project, was set up in 2054 and immediately construction of these vaults were set up to keep those civilians safe. However, as we have explored before in some of my more terrifying vaults within the series, the vaults had another purpose, to run tests on the inhabitants to see how some of them would react to a vast array of things from drugs to social situations and indoctrination. So in today's video I thought we would look over all of the known vaults of Fallout so far, starting from the earliest created vault of the Los Angeles vault up till vault 43, to then be continued in a further video. We will be skipping some of the non-canon vaults and the other vaults that were just cut from the games, so if you feel like we are missing any it's probably because they are listed as being non-canon. But without further ado, these are the vaults of Fallout. As the war within the Middle East was getting more and more heated, the government had to act and, as mentioned before, had to set up Project Safe House in 2054. One problem with this was that the funding was low due to how bad the economy was within America and within the rest of the world, as well as resources were running dry everywhere. Luckily, as vault Tech began getting things ready for their construction, a technological breakthrough happened which allowed these gigantic bunkers to be created and constructed at a rapid pace. To prove to the government that these bunkers were worth investing in to protect its civilians, vault Tech created a concept vault to show how they would be used and how they worked. This concept vault was created outside of the vault Tech headquarters within Los Angeles and would be simply labelled as the Los Angeles Vault. After seeing how it worked, the government invested in vault Tech, asking them to create a total of 122 vaults across the country which would reportedly save 0.1% of the American population from the inevitable nuclear holocaust. As the Great War approached and the nuclear bombs started to be fired, the Los Angeles vault was sealed and kept its residents safe from the bombs. Proving that these vaults actually worked, the original concept vault was able to survive the war and protected everyone inside. Eventually in the year 2092, the doors opened once again as its inhabitants ventured out and went on to settle in the boneyard and continued to set up their town of Adatum. Some however remained within the vault up until 2155, however one faction was growing in force during this time, that faction being the Master's Army known as Unity, a group set up to reform humanity under a new image of the super mutants. The Master would take humans and dip them into the FEV virus, turning them into super mutants, growing their numbers and helping them to become a dominant force within the wasteland. Because of this goal, the Master took to the Los Angeles vault and used its residents to dip them into his forces. But this vault was a great place for the Master to set up his main base and conduct his operations. It would be here in this vault where he would be Based, and with that would construct a cathedral above it. For almost a decade the Master's forces would be based here within the cathedral and Los Angeles vault, until the year of 2162 where the vault would be infiltrated and destroyed by the vault dweller who killed the Master in the process and detonated a nuclear bomb located within the facility. The original vault set up by vault Tech was proof that their concept worked and it would in fact protect its residents from the horrors of the nuclear war. However it would be the events of the post-war which would eventually destroy it, rendering this vault useless to all now.
Vault 3 was constructed within the Mojave Wasteland in the southwestern part of Las Vegas. This vault's original concept was not to experiment on its residents, but in fact was one of the 17 control vaults. The inhabitants of this vault enjoyed life there. It was safe and things were running relatively well. However, within the 23rd century, the vault suffered from a water leak within part of the vault. The leak was so severe that the residents were forced to open up the vault doors to find help out in the wasteland. As the vault dwellers ventured out to find help, they would get along with a lot of the towns outside living within the wasteland and were going to set up trade links and relationships that would help them grow. For a few weeks, the recently emerged vault dwellers were doing well, but sadly news traveled fast about this vault that they had recently opened, attracting the faction known as the Fiends. The Fiends would venture to this vault and would speak with the vault dwellers, but because of the vault dwellers' naivety and lack of security, the Fiends were able to successfully con them and take their vault from them. The Fiends would slaughter all all of the inhabitants living within the vault and would set it up as their impenetrable base of operations, growing stronger and stronger over the time they spent there. Vault 3 was a paradise. It was a real safe haven for those that lived there originally. Whilst they were isolated from the rest of the world, they were able to maintain order, run a democratic society and could live their lives without worry about the barbaric nature of the outside world. If the water leak didn't happen, these residents could have lived out the rest of their lives in the safety of Vault 3. Three. But alas, all their residents lay dead as the fiends grow in their numbers, becoming a nuisance for the rest of the Mojave Wasteland. Vault 8 was like Vault 3 in the sense that it was also one of the 17 control vaults without an experiment taking place. Nothing much really took place within Vault 8, it just had one simple goal, that was to open 10 years after the bombs fell in 2087. However this did not happen and in fact in 2079 the residents were given the all clear signal and emerged from their vault. Luckily the inhabitants were equipped with a Garden of Eden creation kit and once emerging from their vault would go on to establish Vault City. As time progressed, Vault City grew in size with its population gaining in numbers. It was a safe haven for those rare few that were allowed residency within the city. Vault 8 was still used however. In 2241, the vault became one of the best medical centers within the wasteland outside of the Enclave or Brotherhood of Steel bases. This vault would house the finest medical treatment, a brilliant power source, an information hub that had a ton of computers and archives, and a large storage space for ore and other supplies essential to the world being of the city. Whilst the citizens of the city rarely, if ever, ventured into the lower levels of the vault, it is clear that Vault 8 is still working to the benefit of the vault dwellers and it's used to great effect to help power and maintain this fantastic city. It is one of the most efficient vaults on this list and still to this day is probably still in operation, helping the civilians of the wasteland get to the finest medical treatment and information to help them grow as a civilization. Vault 11 is the first example of a vault with a terrifying experiment used on its inhabitants. Vault 11 might seem like a standard control vault, but realistically its main ambition was to run a simple social experiment. The experiment here was its inhabitants were told that they must sacrifice one of their fellow vault dwellers each year, and if they refused to do so, the vault's life support system would be permanently shut down and all would die, or so the vault stated anyway. In reality, the test was to see how long it took for the residents to all join together and go against the rule of the vault. Once they did, they would be let free and be praised for joining together with the vault automated response system saying they were a shining example to humanity. During this time, however, elections took place to see who would be the chosen one to be sacrificed every year to the vault so the rest may live. The person with the most votes would be selected as the overseer and at the end of the year, they would then be killed and elections would start all over again. The first sacrifice made to the vault was the original overseer who knew about the original experiment but hid it from the rest of the population. In response to this, the residents decided that it must always be the overseer who should be sacrificed, hence why the elections took place every year. As time progressed on, elections became more of a way of getting rid of people groups didn't like. Powerful groups would make it so that elections were rigged, as well as posting propaganda up on the walls to try and force the population into getting rid of their chosen candidates. This sparked up back 
battles between groups, with one lady known as Catherine Stone going around stalking and killing members of their group known as the Justice Block to try and save her husband, who had been nominated by them for Overseer. Due to this act, Catherine would be captured and would become the next Overseer. However, as Overseer, Catherine would enforce Overseer Order 745, meaning that the election process would not be down to a democratic vote, but would be chosen by the Volt's computer system and a random number generator, meaning anyone could be up for the role of Overseer and no one had a choice who they wanted to sacrifice. This order, however, caused panic and upset and eventually led to fighting with almost all of the residents being killed in the process. Eventually only five residents remained within the vault and in an act of suicide they defied the vault computer that year and did not send a sacrifice. After this happened the vault congratulated them and gave them all their freedom. However upon hearing the truth about the vault's experiment the survivors committed suicide to punish them for what they had done, recording the whole situation on the holotape. Four gunshots were heard with one person at the end of the tape being heard sighing and dropping their weapon. To this date, Vault 11 remains a tomb displaying some of the horrific events that Vault Tech put on its inhabitants. And the sad tragedy of the tale was that if they had just been told the full truth by the Overseer behind the experiment at the beginning, and if they had all joined together, all of the residents could still be alive and have that freedom the Vault was going to reward them with in the end. Vault 12 was another vault that advertised itself as being a game changer and a place where humanity could thrive, but underneath hid a horrible experiment on its inhabitants. Vault 12 was constructed under the sprawling metropolis of Bakersfield and was said to be built with every amenity in mind for the prospective vault dweller. It was also said to be fitted with the newest in vault water purification system, which would be able to take even the waste located in the sewers and convert it into refreshing, drinkable water, able to deliver over 15,000 gallons every day. If you were to sign up to this vault, you would receive the Pressed Vault Suit Award for your efforts. But on the 23rd of October 2077, when the bombs fell, it became apparent to the citizens of Bakersfield that all the other vaults had already been sealed off. Desperate to survive, they would flood into Vault 12, forcing themselves past others to guarantee their survival. However, once all the residents were in, the true nature of this vault came into effect. The vault door did not shut, which was planned by vault -Tec. The idea behind this vault was to experiment on the dwellers and see how they coped under the effects of radiation. As the bombs hit, the radiation from them flooded into Vault 12, coating everyone in there. Those who were able to survive the events that took place would be heavily ghoulified by the radiation and forever changed by it. By 2083, the survivors would eventually leave their supposed shelter and venture out into the wasteland. However, those that stayed within Vault 12 went on to found the city of Necropolis under the the leader of Set, who took over control from the original Overseer in 2084. Necropolis would continue to survive going into the next few decades, with it being a safe haven for all those mutated by the nuclear war. Whilst the Ghouls now feel safe in their city, it is pretty clear that Vault 12 was one of the most barbaric experiments vault -Tec could do to its population, and now a vast number of Ghouls bear their scars of the horrors of this past organisation. Vault 13 was like Vault 12 in the sense that it also advertised itself as having an endless supply of pure water that the inhabitants could gain access to. This was all thanks to its location within the scenic mountainous region of South California. Vault 13 was one of the most ambitious vaults created by Vault Tech, which started in 2063 and finished in 2069. The vault would also be heavily protected being located under 3.2 million tons of soil, which was 200 feet of thick it was also designed to hold 500 occupants in 100 comfortable quarters with a maximum of 1,000 occupants with hot bunking and double quarter assignments. Vault 13 was also one of the most expensive vaults costing the American government over $645 billion, 150% over their original budget of $400 billion. Although this vault might have been seen as a control vault, it was actually another experiment vault, but not nearly as bad as the previous ones. The 
experiment here was to keep the vault dwellers locked up for 200 years to see what happened when the dwellers were put under prolonged isolation. However, this experiment was to fail as the overseer needed to find a new way to get water for its vault dwellers. After their vaults, water chip began to fail before the year of 2161. Without this water chip, the purification system that was helping these vault dwellers stay alive would fail, meaning they could not live there anymore. They needed to find a new one if they were to survive. Overseer Jack O'Ren had no choice but to send out a search party to find one, breaking vault Tech's experiment. But by 2161, however, the chip completely broke and forced the vault into a state of emergency, with the vault dwellers only having 150 days worth of water reserves left. Venturing out of the vault, the unknown person known as the Vault Dweller would be able to salvage a chip from the Necropolis Vault 12, as well as discover the being known as the Master. The Overseer couldn't have the Master and his forces learning about their vault, so once again sent the Vault Dweller back to deal with the Master at the Cathedral, successfully killing him and destroying all he had been working on. Finally returning to the Vault, however, the Overseer would cast the Vault Dweller out to preserve the Vault's true experiments. But this turned all the other Vault Dwellers against the Overseer, leading many to leave the Vault in outrage. This also led the Overseer to being imprisoned, tried and sentenced to death. As the Vault Dwellers from Vault 13 continued on now within the Wasteland, they would set up the town of Arayo and would set up Vault 13 as a shrine to their hero, to uphold the memory of them and the actions they had done to save their lives. As life continued within Vault 13, they would get a message on their new Vault computer stating it was time to leave the Vault. However, as they emerged, the Dwellers were attacked and enslaved by two Enclave Vertibird assault squads. In May 2242, the Enclave would continue on and would go on to deploy a unit of intelligent death claws to obscure their actions and patrol the nearby area for stragglers. However, the death claws refused to take their orders and turned Vault 13 into their home. Here they would set up a den for their mother, Kirith, and took in various humans as their inhabitants. Most accepted their presence. However, few attempted to take out the death claws, and eventually Frank Horrigan of the Enclave invaded Vault 13 and wiped out all of the death claws and humans inside. After the Enclave's involvement, no one remained in Vault 13, and it is unknown what the future holds for this once monument of vault Tech creation. It is unknown, but it is likely that it is owned and run by the NCR, but it is clear that the Vault 13's history has been filled with betrayal and death, and whoever runs it now might not be safe from outside forces wanting to control the wasteland. Vault 15 might be one of the most significant vaults on this list that would lead to a vast amount of the factions we see within Fallout, including the incredibly powerful New California Republic. This vault was actually one of the few vaults that had an incredibly smooth construction and suffered no delays. This was yet again another experiment vault, and its experiment this time was to place together people who held radically diverse ideologies and cultures to see how they reacted to being in the same small environment as one another. Vault Deck would then monitor their interactions and see how quickly it would fall or even thrive in the 50 years it had planned to stay sealed for. However, as the bombs fell, the vault lost all contact with the outside and all the other vaults, meaning the experiment could not be monitored. As the years went on, the vault continued to deteriorate and its population became extremely overcrowded by 2097, leading to even more poor living conditions. Conflict was inevitable and in the spring, the situation exploded. A schism arose among Amongst the dwellers as the vault was finally opened. Most of the dwellers marched out stripping the vault of all its important resources and equipment, including the Garden of Eden creation kit. But one group remained within the vault trying to live off the bare minimum the vault had left. Those who left formed into separate groups, the most significant one of these being the village of Shady Sands, created by the Gek. The rest of the individuals would band into raider tribes such as the Khans, Jackals and the Vipers, who would terrorise the new California wasteland for years on end. Vault 15 remained in operation for a while, being inhabited by the remaining dwellers. However, not long after these factions rose to power, the vault was invaded by raiders and because of it was abandoned. With no one inhabiting the vault, it started to deteriorate over the years, with its second and third levels completely collapsing. After the NCR formed, the vault was somewhat left alone because of the salvaging rights made between the NCR and other parties. Eventually, it was inhabited by a group of wastelanders who just needed a place to live. 
The Wastelanders settling here believed the lies of the new Khans, who told them that they would rebuild the vault and provide them with shelter, food and water. But hearing that they would be lied to by their new Khans, the settlers would strike a deal with the President Tandy and the NCR, which would allow the NCR access to the vault and the squatters with annexation, education and supplies to survive. With all this done, the NCR would continue their expansion and the squatters learned self-sufficiency and became productive members of society. Vault 15, however, would remain a memory of the past, a place where all of these factions once lived during the Great War. Sadly, not much is known about Vault 17. However, it is known that some of the vault dwellers who inhabited it are still alive, living out within the Mojave Wasteland. From what we know, Vault 17 was a fine place to live up until 2155, where the Master's faction Unity invaded the vault, capturing the inhabitants and subsequently turning them into super mutants. After the Master's passing, only three members of Vault 17 are said to be alive, those being Lillian, Marie Bowen, Becky, and Jimmy. It was said that Lily lived in the vault until the age of 75, where they were invaded, captured, and were turned into Nightkin. Maybe one day we will get to witness what happened within Vault 17, or get to go back to see what has happened to it since 2155. But for now, it is just a mystery vault. Vault 19 is a tale of two halves, literally. Laying out within the Mojave Wasteland, this vault would be located above a parking lot. Venturing down, the vault would be segregated into two different colored sections, red and blue. And once assigned to one of those sectors, the inhabitants would have limited contact with the other half. Vault 19 was in fact the only vault that had two overseers, obviously one for the red sector and one for the blue sector. The main experiment of this vault was to test the inhabitants' paranoia. Whilst they lived there, the citizens would be exposed to different forms of psychological factors that would make them feel like something was constantly wrong. This would be through non-chemical and non-violent means, with one child stating in his terminal that it might be subliminal messaging as he and his friends could hear high-pitched noises. Throughout their time within the vault, many of the residents showed signs of paranoia, and almost all of the time the residents blamed it on the other sector of the vault. Some stated that they were hearing noises, feeling unusual drafts of air from vents, as well as seeing and the lights blinking patterns like some sort of code. For so long, the residents blamed it on the other side, but the truth was it wasn't them. It was in fact the overseers at the direction of vault with some also believing the vault doctors were involved as well. By the 23rd century, this vault is now void of its original inhabitants, with no real sign as to what exactly happened there. It is believed that their paranoia took over completely and caused them to kill one another. It is also believed that it could be the water filtration system poisoned them or that the geckos broke through from the sulfur caves and killed them all. But despite the unknown whereabouts of the vault dwellers, it is known that during the events of the NCR expansion, some convicts from the NCR correctional facility had escaped their capture led by Samuel Cook and discovered this hidden vault. Seeing it was completely abandoned, the powder gangers would set up here and look to rebuild their forces so they could venture out and take over towns of their choosing. But for now, the original residents of Vault 19 are no more. Maybe down to their own paranoia caused by the overseers and vault horrible red versus blue experiment. Another vault located within Las Vegas is Vault 21, once a safe haven for the vault dwellers, now a hotel within New Vegas that is a main source of income for Mr. House. Vault 21 was actually set out to be a really great place to live, but once again it had an experiment that took place there, this one being a bit odd. Vault 21 made sure that everyone within the vault was completely equal to one another, so much so that the vault's layout was perfectly symmetrical to show that everything must be balanced. The one difference with this vault was if anyone had a conflict with anyone, the only way they could solve their problems would be through gambling. Once a conflict was being arranged, the chosen representative winner would earn the right to settle the dispute as wished by the collective. All seemed well within the vault and actually a lot of their problems were solved and it always kept their equality going throughout their years living there. However, in 2274, Robert House contacted the residents at Vault 21, offering them the chance to help rebuild Vegas back to its glory days. Most of the vault dwellers did not want to accept 
accept this offer from the house as they liked the way they had been living in their safe haven. However, a small minority of the residents did want to take that offer. Because of this, the ones wanting to take the offer challenged those who wanted to stay isolated. After playing a few hours of blackjack, those who wished to venture outside won the game and went on to accept House's offer. As they told Mr. House they had accepted his offer, he immediately ventured into the vault, stripping it of all its technology and resources and used it to rebuild the strip. After doing this, Mr. House ordered them to fill the vault with concrete, but thanks to the request of Sarah and Sheldon Weintrap, set up a hotel in the upper levels to help House gain more of an income from his new Vegas empire. Most of the vault dwellers of Vault 21 ventured out to live new lives amongst the communities and forgot of their past within the vaults, most notably one man living in Good Springs known as Doc Mitchell. Vault 21 is a good tale of an equal society going well for many years. However, ultimately, in the end, one lesson can be learnt from it. No matter how equal you think you are, the house always wins. Continuing on into the Mojave Wasteland is Vault 22, one of the most unique but terrifying vaults in all of Fallout. This vault was originally designed as a green vault, a place that would focus on sustaining plant life and experimenting on new species of greenery. Most of these experiments would be run of the mill, however one that would be most successful would be the vault's undoing. During their time here, the vault dwellers running the experiments would be donated a fungus by a defense contractor. This fungus would be known as the Bulvaria modicana which was a fungus used to be a form of pest control. When the spores hit the body of the host, it would take over, colonizing the body, and eventually would be killed due to a lack of body functions. However, the problem with the fungus was that it reanimated the body and continued to control it. Originally developed by the scientists within the X-22 Botanical Gardens in Big Mountain, the scientists would begin using it during and after the events of the Great War. After initially using it, fungal spores would begin spreading throughout the vault, infecting all the population. Isolating one of the first infected scientists, Dr. Harrison Peters, the others would watch as it took over his body, killing him from the inside out, and then reanimating him and turning him into an extremely aggressive host. Eventually the spores took over pretty much the whole vault, turning the deceased human scientists into spore carriers, killing anything in their path and blending in with the plants within the labs to surprise their foes. By 2096, a party of 118 survivors made it out of the vault and made their way for the Zion Canyon. As the survivors tried to live their lives out there within the wide open wasteland, the vault itself fell into disrepair, overrun by plants and wildlife. Occasionally scavengers ventured into the vault to look for salvage, but would be overrun by the wildlife and taken by the spores. Signs outside of the vault would display warnings for anyone who made it there and wanted to look inside, but the greenery of the environment was appealing and almost drew you in to see what was inside. Sadly, once again, Vault 27 is a very unknown vault that has only been mentioned in traveling. However, it is said that this vault had a pretty horrific experiment. That being, the vault was deliberately overcrowded to see how people reacted to these close quarters. 2,000 people were assigned to enter this vault, but the vault only had room for 1,000 inhabitants, meaning that those who entered here to escape the bombs were in for an extremely claustrophobic experience. Now take this vault with a pinch of salt because whilst it has been mentioned in the games, it is not 100% whether this lore is true or not and may not be canon as of yet. But it is believed that Vault 29 is another experimental vault where only those who are under the age of 15 are allowed to gain access. With the experiment created by the scientist known as Derek Greenway, most of the parents were either accidentally redirected to other vaults or were in the early stages of health conditions that would no doubt cause them to die soon after after entering the vault. Vault 29 would also be controlled by a Zax supercomputer, which would be used to raise children with the aid of robotic helpers. They would then be educated in a primitive culture and then released into a controlled environment once reaching maturity. Explaining his plans to Diana, the human brain connected to a powerful computer, Greenway wanted to see what her opinion was on the matter at hand. Diana, however, was appalled by this and said that although it was intriguing, it was morally wrong on so many levels. 
rules. She exclaimed that it needed to be scrapped, but Greenway refused. Because of this, Diana took it upon herself to change his plan completely. Diana would take control of a satellite dish and aimed it at Vault 29, transmitting a series of security codes to the Vault Zach's unit. She would gain control of it and raise the children in a way that was seen in her eyes as morally correct. Eventually, the children would go on to set up the village of twin mothers on top of the vault and set up the religion that worshipped the nature goddess. Diana would continue to maintain the vault through her robot workers as well as protect all of her children to make sure her image of a goddess was preserved. By 2253, the vault itself had ceased working. However, thanks to Diana's intervention, the vault itself is still a holy place for the inhabitants of twin mothers. Vault 34 is a vault where if you pick the gun nut perk in your character's creation, you'll absolutely love to live here, to some extent. Here the vault armory was massively overstocked with weapons and ammunition, and every dweller was able to access it at any time. Along with that, it also had a ton of amenities such as a fully sized swimming pool, which came at the cost of living space. For the first century, the vault was working exactly as planned. The vault was becoming extremely overpopulated, and violence was sprouting up. But in 22 30 large groups of residents started to suggest that reproductive rights should be limited. Because of this suggestion, violence got worse throughout the population. To control this, the overseer stated that if this continued, all weapons would be confiscated. However, this did not help and a vast amount of dwellers left the vault and settled within the Nellis Air Force base, labelling themselves as the Boomers. The Overseer couldn't let this get worse, and because of it installed an armoury lock on his terminal. But the dwellers were getting tired of this Overseer's rule, and were angry at the limitations being put on them. The Overseer in response set up guards on any exit, and secured all doors to make sure no one else could leave the vault. On top of this, he also sealed away the armoury so no one could access it anymore. Fights continued, however, as the dwellers were desperate to get to the armory. Eventually there were not enough guards to protect the vault's key resources from the angry dwellers. Whilst the overseer remained in control, he now had another problem. The vault was now leaking radiation and this was affecting the technicians in the area, such as Chris Haversum who was convinced he was becoming a ghoul. Luckily for Haversum, he was able to leave the vault, but for the rest, the radiation levels grew more and more, which led to mass violence amongst the people. Eventually damage to the reactor meant even more radiation filtered through the vault in a large explosion, wiping out most of the dwellers and turned a lot of them into feral ghouls. Some of the dwellers did survive though and did not turn into ghouls, however instead they were trapped within the southern section of the vault due to a bomb being planted in the pool, exploding and causing the doors to automatically seal. By 2281 those survivors are still there, praying someone will come to save them. We finish off our vault list for this video with three that are sadly some of the smaller vaults unknown to us as of yet. Our first is Vault 36. This vault's main experiment was believed to be to see how the residents responded to terrible foods during their time there. The only notable thing about this vault was that the food extruders within it were designed so that they only produced thin, watery gruel for their residents. The idea of being fed only this for the rest of your life would most likely cause you to become highly irritated and eventually a aggressive to others around you as you lack basic nutrients, eventually causing a lot to most likely starve or kill one another as they are so desperate for other forms of food. Vault 42 is quite similar in this aspect, but instead of food, it was like provided. In Vault 42, the experiment was to see how vault dwellers responded to being in really dimly lit living situations. This vault was only being lit by 40 watt bulbs, nothing more, nothing less. This meant that dwellers would be roaming around in almost pitch black conditions, leading most to paranoia as they are in a constant state of darkness. This would most likely increase aggression amongst the population and drive some to go outright insane. Insane, never knowing what time of day it was. And finally we end on Vault 43 for now. This is probably one of the most bizarre vaults of all time, but if the dwellers were smart could probably overcome the obstacle and live a pretty alright life. This vault would be inhabited by 20 men, 
10 women and of course, because why not, one big panther that would no doubt be extremely hungry. How they got the panther in there without the dwellers knowing, I don't know, and what they wanted to achieve from this split experiment is a complete mystery and quite obvious what's going to happen. But no doubt if you went into this vault you would most likely be eaten within moments by this vicious beast. However, I still personally think if they are smart enough they could lure it into a room, seal the doors and then continue to live in harmony. Humans are smart and with 30 of them I am pretty sure they could tackle this obstacle. Obviously depending on what else is in that vault. But yeah, anyway, 43 is 20 men, 10 women and of course a panther. And those are the first few vaults of the Fallout universe with many more still to go. Do let me know if you enjoyed this video and I will make a part two of this real soon. I know I kind of covered the vaults before but I wanted to do the lore on every single one we know about so far. But anyways if you did enjoy this make sure you give it a like, leave a nice comment and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more lore videos like this then do check out my lore playlist in the description below and if you really really like these types of videos why not go support me on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member for ad-free versions of these videos and early access to them. And speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons real quick. Big thanks to our small fish guys, our big fishes Duquesne 23, Sacrum, Rhino Head, Eddie, Christopher, Andrew, Last Persona User, and Arto Krem, our Sharks, the AVP Man, and Connor, and our huge Megalodons, Sinus, Jacob Garcia, Well Such Gaming, Chernobyl Stalker, Shadow SGT, and Ryan Everett. Also, big shout out to our YouTube channel members, our wise ones, Jambu and Fiery Italian, as well as all my amazing subscribers over on Twitch. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you on a regular basis so thank you so much. But that is all for now, thanks again for watching and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>